All right, take your Bibles and turn to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 8. We're uh, ready for verse 4 tonight. I'll let you all get Brother Bowen caught up on what's going on with verses 1 and 2. I'll recap last week's verse 3. If you remember last week he was transported to Jerusalem. It said that image <laughs> that glory of God, that vision, the one, the man he saw in chapter 1 put forth the form of a hand. <laughs> and took him by the hair. And led him to Jerusalem. Was this physically? Led him physically? Dragging him? through the sky to Jerusalem from Babylon from the Chaldees no he talked about visions, visions of God so it was in the spirit and by the spirit that he was led to Jerusalem to see, I don't know if we'd call them astounding visions, but they did astound him. Better word is probably appalling visions that he sees there at Jerusalem. Nonetheless, that's future yet. We're not ready to talk about that part of it yet. So the point last week was this vision was from God and remember we discussed the thought that God doesn't show us things like that today in dreams in visions like that but remember, we talked about God does give us a vision. He does show us things. Sometimes, as we're looking at the Word of God and reading and studying the Word of God, it's almost as vivid <laughs> as that which we're going to see, look at and see that Ezekiel saw. But the way God speaks to us today, because we have the completed Word of God, the revealed Word of God, that which He wants us to know is right here. And as we read and study this, then His Spirit teaches us that which He wants us to know at the given time that He wants us to know it. And you hear me say things like all the time why I've read uh, that over I've even studied passages of scripture over and I go back and I read them again and study them again I, lo and behold I see something there that I never saw before Amen. great truths from God's word and all that serves to give me a greater glimpse a greater view of God Amen and his glory. We have more to say on that another time. But tonight we're in verse 4. He said, And I and beheld the glory of God, of the God of Israel, was there, according to the vision that I saw on the plain. Did you get that? And behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there 
according to the vision that I saw in the plane. Well, automatically, your mind ought to go rushing back <laughs> to those messages, those thoughts that we had. He saw, he saw what? The glory of God. Amen. The same appearance of the living creatures that is, the wheels and the, and the throne. Uh, throne. That he had seen 14 months previously. Remember? 14 months? Where? Verse 1 of chapter 8 talks about a time period and, and the calculations that we did when we were talking about verse 1 and, and, and looking back at chapter 1 when the vision came to Ezekiel by the river Kibar, there's a period of approximately 14 months, which equates with the period of his 390 days on one side and 40 days on another side. And it would have been sometime after the completion of that, he's still in the 14th month, before the 15th month arrives, that he has this vision. <laughs> Back in his house. Not, not laying out there at, 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 at the drawing that he made and everything and, on the, and laid there on his side and, and the portrait that he gave us there. But he's back in his house. And he sees again, he sees the glory of God, just like what he, what he saw back there in the plain. You say, well, chapter 1 is not in the plain. Chapter 1 is by the river Kibar. Yes, well, let's turn back to the third chapter. In verse 22, it said, And the hand of the Lord was there upon me, and he said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plain. He'd, he'd gone amongst the captives by the river of Kibar, and, and after he'd gotten some visions from God, some word of, from God, and, and he sat there and was bewildered at the behavior of the people. And now God is, is moving him from there and moving him to the plain. Then I arose and went forth into the plain. And behold, the glory of the Lord stood there as the glory which I saw by the river Kibar. <laughs> And I fell on my face. So he said, according to the vision that he saw in the plane. Well, what vision did he see in the plane? <laughs> he saw the same vision in the plane that he saw by the river Kibar. The vision of the glory of God. Now, look with me at chapter 1 and verse 28. He says, as the appearance of the bowl that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spoke. Listen, he saw the likeness of the glory of the Lord, the glory of God, the glory of Jehovah. He saw. You remember what that was? <laughs> None other than Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Remember, turn with me back to the book of Revelation. Can anyone tell me which chapter in the book of Revelation? Chapter 21. Revelation 
chapter 21. Said in verse 23, and the city, the New Jerusalem, had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did what? Lighten it. The glory of God did lighten it. Yeah, well, the glory of God can lighten it. Well, and the Lamb is the light thereof. What lightened the city? The Lamb. The Lamb is the glory of God. So what did Ezekiel see? By the river Kibar, again in the plain, and again in the 8th chapter from his house. He saw the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who is the glory of God. Now, turn with me to the book of Psalms in chapter 63. Psalms chapter 63 verse 1 says, O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is to see thy power and thy glory as so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. What is he asking to see here? Is he asking to see the sanctuary? Has he seen the sanctuary before? <laughs> no. He's asking to see the power and glory of God as he saw before in the sanctuary. The power and glory of God is what he's desiring to see. He's desiring to see God in a greater light, in a greater view. Every time we come into the house of the Lord and understand that now today the church is the house of the Lord. The church has purchased this property, was given this property, deeded this property, inherited this property, whatever, to house the church body in. And every time the church assembles together here to worship the Lord, the Lord is here, His people are here, the body of Christ, and we ought to see the power and glory of God every time we come in. Do you see the power and glory of God every time the church is assembled together in worship? Do I see the power and glory of God every time the church is assembled together for worship? We ought to. And we ought to desire to see it just as we can think of other times that we have seen the power and glory of God. Oh, <laughs> To see the power and glory of God. The psalmist was desired to see the power and glory of God. What kind of power, what kind of glory of God? The same kind of power and glory of God that, that, that Abraham saw. When the power of God and the glory of God took that dead womb of Sarah and made it live and made it bring forth the promised child Isaac. The same power and glory of God <laughs> that caused the womb of a virgin who had never lain with man before to, to conceive and to bring forth 
the chosen of the Lord, that God manifested in the flesh. The same power and glory of God that, that, that died on the cross of Calvary and, and the power and glory of God raised Him from the dead, brought Him to life. That same power and glory of God that, that took a man who was dead in trespasses and sins and made Him to live. <laughs> That's the power and glory of God. We ought to desire to see that. We ought to see desire to see it in a greater way than we've seen him before. The more, listen, the more glorious that we see God to be, the more abominable we'll see sin. The more we keep in mind the power and glory of God, the power of God that 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 made that dead womb live and bring forth a child. The same power and glory of God that made a virgin to be able to conceive without ever knowing man and bring forth God manifested in the flesh. The same power and glory of God that made Jesus Christ rise again from the dead and that same power that rose Him from the dead rose us from the dead. We need to keep that in the forethoughts of our minds always because as we do, we see a greater abomination to our sin before Him. As we see God in a greater way. Turn with me to the book of Job. The book of Job. Now mind you, Job was a just man. Job was a righteous man. And chapter 1 says, there was a man in verse 1 in the land of Oz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And when Satan, Satan came uh, 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 designed uh, something, God said, have you ever considered Job? The man who's perfect and upright, a man who's just and righteous, and, and, and so much so that there's none like him in all the earth. But this Job, this Job had some things to go through. He had many trials and tribulations to go through. He had his friends forsake him and, and, and ridicule him and tell him he, was, he had sinned and, and brought the judgment of God upon him. And they were wrong. They, they were the furthest from the truth. And in chapters 38, 39, 40, and 41, God gives to Job a greater vision of himself than so that Job had never seen one like that before. And so it comes to chapter 42 and Job says after God had given him this greater view of himself, he said, Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech ye, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Not that he hadn't seen him before, not that he hadn't heard of him before, but now he heard from him and he saw him in a much greater way than he ever saw him before, those trials and tribulations. And what did he say? Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. You see what a greater vision of God will cause us to do? It will see, cause us to see our sin as abominable as it really is before God. And it will cause us to do like Job. I abhor myself. And it will cause us to repent of our sins. 
turn with me to the book of Psalms, in chapter 97. Psalms chapter 97, verse 10. The psalmist here says, Ye that love the Lord, hate evil. <laughs> he preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the land, hand of the wicked. Ye that love the Lord, hate evil. Oh, I hate evil. Well, when we say that, what do we mean? Well, we mean we hate evil all around us and all in the world all around us. And well, what about the evil that's in us? Look inward. That, that ought to be a greater pull and a greater hatred for that even than, than that which is out. You see, the world is evil and wicked. But all oh, that that evil and wickedness can abide in me, a child of God. You see, we ought to hate it. We ought to appall it within ourselves. Psalms 119. Psalms 119. I... I want to do some messages from the 119th Psalm, if the Lord will allow me. I, I thought maybe that's where I was going when I, when I finished out Matthew chapter 1. And then I, he led me into chapter 2 of Matthew. He hadn't let me do 119 yet. Psalms 119 and verse 104. He says... Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every... Why is it through the Word of God? Why is it through His Word <laughs> that we get understanding and, and hate that which is wicked, that which is deceitful, that which is lying? Because it is an abomination to God. His Word tells us that it is. It's against God. <laughs> God who is truth. God who is just. God who is righteous. You see, it's in His Word we get a greater vision of God and we see our sin. And we hate our sin. We see the false way that is in us. We see the deceit that is in us. You see, verse 113 he said, I hate vain thoughts. Well, at first glance, uh, uh, vain thoughts uh, seems to be a skeptic. People who, who are the opposite of God's holiness, of God's holy ways. They're skeptical of what they... We'll be getting into it. But they even deny that God even is. That He even exists. You see, He said, I hate, I hate those kind of thoughts, those imaginations that are in wicked man. Verse 128, He said, Therefore, I esteem. I have a high estimation. I have a high value of all of our... Pre How high is our value? <laughs> How high is our uh, estimation of the Word of God? How high is mine? I'm appalled that, that I can take and read the Word of God and I can see a verse that stands out to me. And, and, and I've said it before. I, 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 I make a habit of, of posting on, on Facebook every day at least one verse that stands out to me. And it seems like these days uh, three verses I'm posting. Maybe that's the problem. I'm letting too many of them stand out. 
and, and I'll post those verses. And you know what I find myself doing a couple hours later? What was that I posted this morning? Yeah. And I got to go back and look at it again. See what it was. <laughs> How high a value do I have of the Word of God? Of His precepts? Concerning all things to be right. And because they're right, and I have that high value of it, I hate every false way, he said. Wow. I don't know about you, brethren, but I need a greater vision of God. I need a greater vision of God. I need, I need to see the power and glory of God as I've seen it before in the sanctuary. Look with me at verse 163. He said, I hate and abhor lying. But thy law do I love. Why does he hate and abhor lying? Because it's evil. It's wicked. It's against what I see from God's word. You see? It's against God. Then why do I do it? Not that I just come right out and outright lie. Tell an outright lie. You've heard me say it before, but deceit, the practicing of deceit, what is that? Well, every time we try to make somebody think we're something we're not, we practice deceit. That's lying. That's lying. Why do I do it? Why do you do it? I need a greater vision of the power and glory of God. Turn with me to the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs in chapter 8. In verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And then he lists all these things that are evil that he, that he hates. Pride, arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth. These are things that I hate. You say, well, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Do you know the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge? Do you know the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom? Proverbs. Mm -hmm. Yes, verse 10 of chapter 9 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Lord is understanding. <laughs> you see, Jesus Christ is, is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Jesus Christ is wisdom. He that knows Jesus Christ is wise. He that knows Jesus Christ has the fear of the Lord. See, and that all began at regeneration. When I had a view of this sinful man that I am, and had a view of Jesus Christ, who paid the price Amen. for my sin. Amen. See, he was made unto me wisdom. I fear God. I don't fear him like I ought. If I did, would I sin like I do? Would I lie like I do? <laughs> would I behave like I do? Would I get angry like I do? 
Would I treat my brethren like I do? <laughs> Not if I really feared the Lord like I ought to fear Him. You see, the problem is, here's the problem. We care so little for the things which are truly sublime. We care more for the things of little importance. The things that shall pass away. Did you know <laughs> those things are of little importance? Turn with me to the book of Matthew. Matthew in chapter 6. Oh, you're not going to read that scripture again, are you? Yeah? 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You can't love two. You can't have two masters. You'll love the one and hate the other. That's what he says on down a few, few other verses. Look with me at Psalms. Psalms chapter 105. In verse 4. Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His face evermore. Oh, you see, our esteem ought to be the Lord and the things of the Lord. We ought to be seeking to Him and the things that are His. Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Spirit said to us, with Paul as his penman, spokesman, in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1, If ye then be risen with Christ... Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. You see, those are the most important things. As we're seeking the things of God and seeking Him, seeking the Lord, we have a greater view of our sinfulness. We abhor ourselves repent before the Lord. Amen. Shall we stand? Be dismissed in word of prayer.